What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about something a little different than what I usually do, which is hike reviews. So today we're going to talk about what's on your feet. Yak tracks, micro spikes, crampons, snowshoes. Why do I need them? What are they used for? Today we're going to talk about all of it. If you haven't seen me before, give the channel a subscribe to not miss out on any future content. I'm going to be doing more stuff like this moving forward in terms of gear reviews, gear I recommend, what's the difference between things, etc. So today we're going to talk about the four main things that people put on their feet when they're hiking. That's micro spikes, yak tracks, crampons, and snowshoes. It's important to know when to use them. Do you need them for your specific type of hiking? Do you need them at all for your conditions? Uh, and today we're going to talk about all of that. So first up, let's talk about yak tracks as they're known. Essentially, they're a wire system that you put on your uh, boot or shoe. They can fit on any shoe as long as you order the right size. And essentially, in my opinion, they're kind of garbage. I think that they don't really offer enough of um, traction unless you're a runner looking to run some you know, snow covered roads or things of that nature. The nice thing about yak tracks is they are the cheapest option of everything I'll show you today. So you can get them basically for like 20 bucks and up. I mean, honestly, I've seen them anywhere between 20 and 40 bucks. Again, they're universally uh, fitted, so you don't have to buy special shoes or boots or anything like that. Uh, and I'll put a picture somewhere around here to show you them because I don't own them. It just kind of goes to speak how much I really think they're useful in terms of hiking. Next up, we have micro spikes so micro spikes are probably my favorite uh, piece of equipment to use if you're an intermediate or beginner hiker i've hiked so many mountains with just micro spikes and they've really um, never led me astray uh, the only negative about micro spikes uh, besides you know the little grip uh, versus the large teeth on crampons is that uh, in warm weather they can sometimes ball up uh, the snow can sometimes ball up underneath which is uh, unfortunate but just give you a quick look here this is what a micro spike looks like again it's compatible with every shoe very easy to put on um, and uh, it gives you a little bit more teeth uh, grip than your boot would um, and there's various brands of micro spikes uh, these are hill sounds not sponsored I paid for these but they come with a nice little carrying bag here uh, which makes them pretty easy to pop in any backpack uh, in terms of price for micro spikes um, about 50 60 bucks depending on what you buy and really in, in terms of terrain they really open up everything um, I've, I've hiked a ton of stuff with them uh, but they're not a flotation device, obviously, so don't expect them to help you stay afloat in the snow. They'll just give you uh, better grip. Um, they're also good on mixed terrain, too, so if it's early season or late season with a little snow left over, uh, they don't have a huge problem gripping on rocks. And you can walk pretty normally with them, unlike a crampon, uh, which you might have to take off once you hit dry ground. Next, let's talk about crampons. So... There are three main types of crampons, uh, strap on, step in, and then hybrids. Uh, basically the difference between the three is what kind of boot and primary use they have. So uh, for a, a strap on crampon like this, uh, these are gonna be more universal with boots. I'll show you here. These are just a pair of uh, La Sportiva hiking boots. And as you can see, uh, they do accept crampons. Uh, so what you're looking for when you're going for a crampon boot would be one that has a little bit more of a rigid sole. Um, so if you want to look at my uh, kind of day-to-day -day hiking boots, these ones you can see have a little bit more flex to them. You do not want that with a crampon. Um, if the boot has flex, the crampon really becomes useless. Uh, so whereas a boot like this La Sportiva here, uh, see the sole is a little bit more rugged and it'll accept uh, strap-on crampons. Now, 
If you have mountaineering boots, which is something like this right here, uh, you can see this plastic piece on the back and these boots are firm. I won't even try to bend them because they're basically rock solid on the bottom. And a mountaineering boot really uses a uh, step-in crampon um, and basically there's a little piece that will strap into this back part here and it'll make them really snug. So if you're ever doing uh, extreme mountaineering, so something with a pretty intense angle, um, you know, a calore, ice climbing, anything like that, you're going to want a boot like this with a uh, strap on, cramp, or excuse me, a step in cramp on. But if you're just looking for something like a calore, um, you know, soft spring conditions, and I know I said calore tight uh, twice here, but depending on the calore you're doing at the angle, etc., uh, you can definitely get away with a strap on uh, like this. So as I mentioned, main use for crampons would be more technical terrain. So in terms of, you know, ice climbing, uh, steeper mountains with ice or snow. Um, and, and again, really, it's, it's a preference thing in terms of what kind of crampon and boot you have. Personally, uh, I find these mountaineering boots here to be a bit uncomfortable to hike in. And so I tend to go with something like this, which is more of a standard hiking boot, uh, but it also takes the crampon. So it kind of gives me best of both worlds. Uh, the mountaineering boots, if you've ever worn a pair, they're very stiff and they're a little heavy. So for like a long day hiking, long approach or whatever, uh, I, I would try to use something different. But that's just me. Everybody's different and you'll just have to figure out what works along the way. Um, so I mentioned a boot like this, which is like a typical hiking boot. Um, it's not going to be compatible with a crampon, but any of your local uh, gear stores uh, will be able to help you out and, you know, get you set up in terms of what boots that are hiking boots and not a mountaineering boot except crampons. But going back to like what we said about yak tracks, what's nice about them is they work on any boot. So while they don't give you as much support as a crampon in terms of grip into the snow or ice, they are universal so you don't have to buy any uh, additional gear when you hit the trail next time. So in terms of a price point for a crampon, typically these run anywhere between about 100 to 200 bucks, depending on the pair that you're looking to get. These, uh, Strap-ons are a bit less expensive than the step-ins. Um, and again, they're more widely accepted. But in terms of, you know, being really stable on the snow, um, a, a, a step-in will be a bit more secure than a strap-on would. Obviously, this video is not about boots, but to kind of put things in perspective when you're thinking about gear, you know, these these kind of hiking boots are pretty universal. They're about 100 bucks or so. These are closer to 200 and then these mountaineering boots are pretty expensive. They'll be anywhere from 300 bucks to 1000 bucks, depending on the type you buy. Um, so again, before you start diving into, you know, do I need the uh, step on or excuse me, step in crampons, you really want to make sure, you know, to think about your budget, to think about how much you're going to use them uh, before you go dropping thousands of dollars. It's awesome to do that and look at all your new gear, but if you don't use it, it's really a waste of money. Finally, let's talk about snowshoes. So, uh, before I drop these off my deck, snowshoes are pretty universal uh, in terms of what they do, in terms of uh, their use. Basically, a snowshoe will help you when the snow is either soft from warm or deep and soft from fre being fresh and it'll help you not sink in as much. Now, I will say that when I hike, I tend to bring snowshoes along a lot, but I really have had very few cases where I actually need them. So they're almost like a, a, a CYA piece of gear where, man, I hope I don't need those you know, when you're sinking knee deep post holing, um, you'll really wish you had them. But I, I have to say, there's been very few times where I actually need them in terms of flotation, staying on top of the snow. Well, let's look at the snowshoe here in terms of, you know, the makeup. It, like I said, it is compatible with any kind of boot or shoe. Um, obviously, if you're gonna have deeper snow, 
you might want a hiking boot or some gaiters to kind of give you some um, you know protection from the snow coming into your boot um, in terms of the makeup of the snowshoe they're all very similar they have different strap systems some use a boa now some you know are only one strap instead of two um, but the main difference between every snowshoe is the length of it so length the longer the snowshoe the deeper theoretically of the snow you can walk in without sinking into it you'll notice that these pair right here have this little bar uh, which you can flick up and essentially what this does is when you're hiking up a steeper uh, terrain or angle um, it'll make you feel like you're walking on flat ground again i don't use this feature that much but it is something nice if you're really uh, trudging away and going up those steep slopes to kind of give you that flat that flat flat foot feel excuse me even when you're kind of going up a steep slope. Price point of the snowshoe can really range. They're all over the place. If I remember correctly, I got these obviously at Cabela's a while ago and they were like 60 bucks for the pair. Um, they do make more expensive ones. Honestly, they're all pretty similar in terms of features. The nicer ones will be made of, you know, nicer metal, so they might weigh less, be a bit uh, less durable though. Obviously you can see here, you know, I've scratched these guys up quite a bit. The thing about snowshoes is you're really gonna, um, you know, use them uh, in varied terrain a lot of the time. So, you know, keeping keeping them nice and clean is not really, uh, in terms of scratches, the goal here. That wraps up our look today at footwear. Again, we went over yak tracks, garbage, uh, micro spikes which are a nice entry level piece of gear to have they're pretty inexpensive um and and they're really universal which is awesome crampons which once you get into more serious or technical terrain you're probably going to want to pick those up and then of course snowshoes which are pretty universal and really for any level of hiker depending on the conditions you're in if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe not to miss any future hike reviews, gear reviews, how-tos, stuff like this in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.